Hey y'all, Budwing here, back to bring some grumpiness to the internet. Today I have a special little treat for you, somebody that may be familiar to some of you. Um, he's a male feminist, has some strange ideas about feminism and his name is Robert Wallace I remember him cousin BW he's that feller with the really nice trailer ain't he nice trailer Melvin what the heck are you talking about you know what I'm talking about cousin BW you know that nice trailer why, with all them cords and wires and stuff hanging around, all the clutter, it reminds me of home. Almost makes me homesick. Oh, Melvin. Just, wait, take, well, just go back in the house or something. Go get your beer. Tell you what, go get your beer and then come back here and sit on the porch and be quiet. I've got things to do here. I ain't got time to fool around with your no, silly notions. All right, folks. Let's just get right into this. And in order to uh, take us into the next video, I turn this over to our projectionist, Scooter. Scooter, roll that beautiful bean footage. Ha <laughs> ha! Man, this is one of them moments! Catch a ride! Hey folks, how you doing? I'm just fine, Robert. How are you? How's the missus? So... I thought I would do a video today for YouTube, and, and I thought I would just, it, I've been thinking, you know, over the last while and whatnot. So you've been thinking over the last while, have you, Robert? Well, this ought to be good. Remember how it turned out the last time you thought you were all going to give us a history lesson? You know, the video that Barry covered? Yeah, that didn't turn out so good. One thing I haven't told you folks is that uh, I'm not the only one to do a response to this video. Kazum Fowler, and if you're watching this, Kazum, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, has also done a response. Now, Kazum is also a feminist, but he seems to be one of the more rational ones as far as I can tell anyway. And, uh, you know, if, if one of your own circle is telling, telling you to calm yourself, yeah, you know you're doing a bang-up job. But anyway, let's let Robert get back to it, see what he's got to say. Dealing with anti-feminists and, and listening to what they've had to say, even though I haven't been responding. But you did respond, Robert, or have you forgot already? Are you smoking? Something? Something to hurt your short-term memory? You made a video uh, response to Bering about the video he done on you. But anyway, let's, uh, let's see if he remembers anything else. I thought I'd look into my channel. I've done 49 videos out of over a thousand on my channel. And I say over a thousand because not all of them are publicly available. But of the over a thousand videos I have, about 49 deal with feminism this will be number 50 and I was thinking because I, I have resisted labeling myself a feminist because a lot of the baggage that goes along with that label Robert take it from me you're a feminist and I was like you know what do I support feminism I'm pretty sure I do I know I sure as hell don't support anti-feminism and you know, a lot of the MGTOW and whatnot, I don't support that at all. Yes, I do support feminism. But why do I personally support feminism? I don't know, Robert. We're all wondering the same thing. Why don't you tell us? Oh, I sure do love that trailer. Hey, I wonder if you'll sell it to me. I can move it right in here in your backyard, Cousin BW, and we could be together all day. Melvin, Dag, Nabbit. Will you just be quiet, please, and know you're not moving in my backyard. Hard enough to put up when you as it is. Because I know a lot of people, when you, you know, start talking about feminism, 
they go to the extreme edges of third wave feminism and they they're almost always cherry picking the same events to say look at these people you know the the girls with you know period blood smeared on their faces or triggly puff go on my free speech my free speech or you know that one chick with the red hair or whatnot and they're always cherry picking the same ones the extreme examples and going look and they try to smear the whole feminist movement with that crazy and I we point them out robert because they are a part of Feminism. You may not agree with their approach, but they are a part of the same movement you are. Just like people uh, want to point out the Westboro Baptist Church, for example, when they're talking about Christians or uh, talk about Republicans, they're going to point out some KKK member or something. They're going to point, no matter what group you're in, if somebody disagrees with you, they're going to point to the most extreme examples. And here's the thing. Trigley Puff, Big Red, that protest outside the Toronto talk on men's suicide, all those extreme examples that you see brought up on videos on the internet, they are feminists. And I'm not saying all feminists are that crazy. Of course they're not. I've seen a few that are somewhat reasonable. Your buddy Kazoom is, it seems to be reasonable to me. But until the rest that don't agree with them point them out, ostracize them, make it very plain that this is what feminism is not about, we're going to keep pointing to those. Besides that, it's funny. <laughs> it's just funny to watch, you know. Besides, what would you have us do? Point to Christy Winters <laughs> and her bunch, you know. Michael slap me some butt Rollins. Is that what you want us to, the group you want us to hold up? And maybe they don't scream and yell, well, sometimes, as much as Trigley Puff or Big Red, but they're, they're just as insane and they're just as ridiculous. Come on, Robert, look around you, dude. Look at what you're involved in. And then answer that question. Why do we point them out all the time? I admit, those people have gone too far. But the base concepts of feminism are fine. People will read this, read that, read that, and it's like, you know what? No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. This is why I personally support feminism. Okay? That is the fact that I have seen, you know, and I hear feminists complain about this, of a male treatment of women. You're out in public, and you know, let's say there's a woman cashier, and she's ringing it up, and the guy going, "You should smile. Why aren't you smiling? Like she owes him something. Smile. You're you're here to please me. Smile." Before I give my response to this, I'm going to interject a little piece of a video, his following video, which was response, which was a response to Kazum's response to this video. Let's take a look at that, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. When we're talking about, uh, I didn't think it was right to tell people to smile, because you're treating them like they're objects. Um, he made the comment that when you go to a job, you are an object. I couldn't disagree more. Uh, honestly, when you go to a job, just because the corporate oligarchy has set it up so that you have to work as a wage slave in order to survive it doesn't mean you you discard your, your humanity you know people working in, in convenience stores grocery stores wherever in the service industry are still human beings whether they're on the clock or not regardless of their race their gender their gender identity their sexual orientation none of these things matter you are still a human being and and when you start to say, well, no, they're on the clock, therefore they're objects, you know, that, that raises, uh, you know, the situation in our society where when people have to work two and three jobs just to get by so that they can pay their rent and attempt to raise their children even though they don't really have any time like that, and, and they give up their humanity when they're on the clock. 
at that point in time, the only people who, who can be human beings are those who can afford to be human beings. And that raises a question, at what price do we buy our humanity? Because certainly those who are at the lower end, economic end of the spectrum, they can't afford to be human beings anymore if, the, if they're objects as soon as they clock on. Because they're almost always clocked on just to be able to make it so that they can clock on to be objects again. I mean, that really takes the concept of wage slavery one step more into making us true slaves. We are owned by the corporations of which we are beholden to in order for us to live long enough so that we can be owned by the corporations. No. When people clock on, they're still human beings. You don't give up your humanity just because you're attempting to survive. I, I cannot disagree more on that. Wow. Where do I even really start? Robert. I'm not saying they're objects, but they do owe something to their customers and to the company they work for. And I'm going to tell you a little something about how employment works, what you call wage slavery, um, which is a comment that doesn't surprise me coming out of you for some reason. And I think I'm qualified to say this because I started working for a paycheck for the first time in 1976. And before that, I'd done everything I could to earn money. I mowed lawns, I shoveled snow out of, off the sidewalks, I picked tomatoes, I shucked corn, went around the neighborhood, collected pop bottle, and turned them in for uh, uh, money. And yes, that used to be a thing. So yeah, I know a little bit about work. When you go and take a job, no matter what that job is, no matter how high on the ladder you are, and you, in most cases today, uh, sign an employment contract, you, you fill out all that paperwork when you first start the job, what you are in essence saying is that I will sell my time and my services to you for this work week or the work hours, whatever set, for this amount of money. And for that time, I'm selling my services. So you've promised to do that, and you owe them the best job you could do. I mean, I've had all kinds of jobs. My father taught me that, son, even if it's just cleaning toilets, you be the best toilet cleaner you can be. You give them everything you got. Now, have I had some jobs where I didn't get treated right? Sure. Are there some jerks for bosses and, and company owners out there? Sure. And there's people that will take advantage of their employees. I'm not saying that at all. But when you take a job, you are selling your services. You owe that to them. That's what you agreed to. Now, much of that time, a great portion of my adult life, I worked in customer service, both in public and on the phone, but mostly in public. And the example that you gave, the cashier, was also in public service. Now, first of all, are you telling me that just to tell someone to smile is somehow invading on them in some way? Oh, come on, don't be so sensitive. And besides, if you're going to be in customer service, you have to smile. You have to be friendly. Yes, she did owe that to that other person. That's her job. And if she can't do that job, she needs to get another one. There's no shame in it. Not everybody's cut out for that kind of work. Go do something else. Just don't do that if you can't appeal to the customers. Yes, she does owe that. Not because she's an object, but because that's the job she agreed to. That's the job she agreed to do. I'm not saying they're an object. And nobody knows any more than I do about how tough it is out of there to earn a living. And, and you know, here in the old Bloodwing household, we live hand to mouth. You know, as soon as there's any money comes in the house, it's right back out on food and bills. 
you know, uh, but I'm not complaining. It's just the way it is, and you make the best you can out of it. You know, so nobody has to tell me about how tough it can be out there. Nobody's asking you to lose your humanity. It's, it's not losing your humanity to expect someone in the public service to smile, Robert. You've got some issues somewhere behind all this. I, I really get that feeling that you've got some issues that you really might want to deal with. But <laughs> feminism is not going to help you with this, dude. And the person that asked her to smile done nothing wrong. I can't say the cashier done anything wrong, but if anybody did, she did. She was not fulfilling the job she agreed to do. It's got nothing to do with she's a woman, nothing to do with her gender, her race, her politics, nothing. She's failing at her job, plain and simple. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that little clip in there. Let's go back to the original video. Uh, what if she's dealing with clinical depression? What if she just doesn't want to smile? What if she's doing, just wants to do her job? No, 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 no. She's got a smile for me. She is here for me. It's treating her like an object. And even if you try to object, going, well, look, nobody likes looking at a sour puss. No pun intended, I'm sure. You know, no, no, and I get told to smile. Well, you see, then again, you're still being selfish. I don't want to look at a non-smiling face, so you have to smile to make me happy. You are an object to serve me. And if somebody's doing the same to you, guess what? Both people have had something wrong being done to them. I know, I already covered this. but Dude, Robert, if she's having a bad day or she's depressed over something, yes, yeah, she still has to smile. Suck it up, buttercup. It's your job, dude. It's your job. No one's treating her like an object. They're just expecting her to do her job. So I see that, and like, you're treating women like objects, and that's not cool. Conversely, you know, you see women who don't wear makeup. You should put on some makeup. You should try to wear pretty clothes. You need to look pretty. I see people saying this to women. I, and I have seen this. Oh no, Cousin B.W., you mean he's actually seen people trying to help people look a little better? Oh my goodness, the horror of it all. Yeah, I know, Melvin. It's terrible, isn't it? Of course, it's not like women would ever tell a man to trim his beard or cut his hair or maybe lose some weight or wear a suit or some better clothes. No, they would never do that. Well, heaven forbid. And it's like you're still treating them like an object, like they are here to please you. You have to look alluring to please me. Why aren't you doing that? Right? Wrong. Maybe they're just trying to give them some helpful advice on how to look better. Sometimes when you look better, you feel better. You know, maybe they're really not treating them like objects, Robert. But on the other side of the coin, you do a Google search for... Girl sent home. Just that on a Google search. And you will see story after story after story after story. Different stories, mind you. Of girls being sent home from school because of their clothing that was too, you know, sexy, too revealing. And sometimes it was just so much as showing the shoulder. And they're saying, no, you have to go home from school because you are too attractive and you are too it, 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 distracting for our male students. And you see a problem with this, Robert? I, I mean, I don't get your thought process here. Schools are a place of learning, and you don't want something distracting. If a girl is wearing something a bit too revealing for the school atmosphere, yeah, I see no problem with it. Most schools have a written dress code. And if you're not match matching that dress code, then yes, you can get sent home. They can wear whatever they want outside of school on their own, on their, you know, on their own time. But when they're at school, they will be expected to meet that dress code. And I'm sure the same would go for a boy if he wore something that was not according to the dress code. He could also get sent home. <laughs> School's a place of learning. 
not for showing off your cleavage or your legs or if you're a guy, your bulge or any of those things. And it's not a place to stretch your legs and, and show your independence and, and, and you know, uh, fight against the man because you know what that's going to get you? Sent home. Telling the girl that the education of male students is more important than their education and that their, most, their importance is mostly of their body, their sexuality. So you have to be just alluring enough to be attractive, but not so sexy as to be distracting, and that forces them to fit into this narrow little, like, threading a needle, and it's still treating them like objects. And that's not cool. You know? It, I see this. I'll tell you what I see, Cousin B.W. I see the fact that he seems awful concerned about the way girls dress at school. Yeah, I noticed that too, Melvin, but let's not make any undue accusations here, shall we? Let's get back to the video. And then they're also generally treated like they're stupid a lot of times. Mansplaining. People will complain about that. Oh, mansplain this. It's real. I've seen people mansplain to women as though the women are stupid. Treating them like they're idiots. Even though they may actually know the subject very well. I actually saw this one on Facebook a while back. Where a woman who was an astronaut put up a thing on Twitter about her astronaut training. And some guy, who's some random asshole, answered her treat trying to explain something to her as though she didn't know what the fuck she was doing. She was an astronaut. Alright, she'd already gone through the military training and the astronaut training and she was getting ready to go up into space you know, like astronauts do, and there's some random assholes trying to explain to her, you know, basic physics stuff that she obviously already knew or she wouldn't have been in the position that she was. I mean, that's mansplaining in the extreme. Well, without having more context on the whole astronaut conversation, I really can't say a whole lot, you know, without knowing what it was he was trying to explain to her, what the conversation actually was. You know, but I, I can tell you this, it's not necessarily about misogyny. I, I know a lot of people, for instance, I've, I've got a cousin that I, I, I really like, but God love him, no matter what you're talking about, no matter who you're talking to or he's talking to, he does you one better. There's always that person in the crowd, and it's got nothing to do with whether they're a woman or not. He does it to me all the time. He does it to other men all the time. And I know tons of people like that. There's just a whole heck of a lot of know-it-alls out there. And there's a lot of know-it-alls out there in the feminist world. I mean, Christy Winters is one of the biggest know-it-alls I know. Is there anyone on YouTube any more condescending acting than her? So, yeah, uh, uh, don't give me this mansplaining crap. You, you haven't made your case with that one yet. But I've seen it in other things, you know, personal life, out in stores, you know, whatnot, trying to buy some booze, you know, going through the checkout line. And, and the woman, I said, oh, that looks like a good drink, you know, I'm about to show this up. And I said, like, yeah, it's pretty good. And the guy with me starts explaining it to her like she has no fucking idea what, how to mix a drink. And for all he knows, she could have a second job as a bartender. He didn't know nothing about her. But treating her like she's stupid. And it goes on and on and on. I've seen it in other instances. You know, where I've been with women who know how to work on automobiles better than I do. In a garage. And they just start like, talking to her like she's stupid. You know? It, so, yeah. You know, that that's wrong. Well, in your first example there, Robert... You don't know anything about this lady either. You don't know that if she's a, a bartender. All that's known is that she's a cashier at a uh, liquor store. At a liquor store. That's all that's known about her. That doesn't say that she knows anything about liquor. It just says she knows how to run her cash register. And maybe the guy was just trying to break the ice and be friendly and thought the best way to do it was explain how to make the drink. You don't know. If you keep going through life this sensitive to everything around you, you're, you're going to be an 
unhappy, unhealthy individual. And if that's the case, I feel sorry for you. Man, grow a thicker skin. You're still not making your case for mansplaining. Now, in the second instance about cars, yeah, I admit. Now, I worked a long time in, in the car repair business. A long time. And there are certain mechanics that will take advantage of you or try to if you're a woman. You know how you combat that? Learn a little something. First thing I taught my wife when we got married was how to change a tire, how to change a headlight, how to do this, check the oil, how to do simple things around the car. And do you think that women are so weak that they can't stand up for themselves and tell that know-it-all jerk to shut up? Come on. That's what kills me about feminists. They go on and on about how they're being oppressed and they're taking so much credit away from women. My mother was a strong woman, one of the strongest people, regardless of gender, I know. And trust me, she would have been perfectly capable of telling you to shut the heck up. <sighs> There's just... All you're making a case for here, Robert, are know-it-alls, not mansplaining. The, the idea of catcalling on the streets, and then there, there are some people who go, well, it's just a compliment. Well, maybe you think it's a compliment, maybe... She doesn't, you know, think so. Then even if it is, you're still thinking about yourself rather than thinking about the other person. You know, I, I, somebody starts catcalling my wife, I'm not happy about it. I know she's not happy about it. You know, so these, these are the things, these are the things of reasons why I support feminism because women aren't being treated equal. Uh, here we go with the whole catcalling thing. Yeah, there are some jerks out there that go too far with it. And if they're catcalling your wife while you're present, then that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's being a jerk. But that's what they're being, a jerk. There's a lot of jerks, male and female. You know, not all men are like that. And besides, I know a lot of women that take it as a compliment. My wife does. And trust me, if it were turned around at my age and in my shape, if, if I got catcalled, jeez, I'd be proud as a peacock. Let me put it on record out there to you, ladies. If you see OBW bouncing down the road, the side of the road with his cane and all, and you feel like losing your mind and catcalling me, you go right ahead. Catcall all you want. Of course, I'm going to tell you that you probably need glasses, but you go right ahead. But there's one actual big thing, and I'm actually going to do something I don't normally do, a little bit of video editing, because I actually want to share another thing real quick that I know a lot of people are going to have a problem with. Rape culture. Ha! Yeah, people have a problem when you talk about rape culture. Yeah, they do, because it's bull crap. It doesn't exist. Boys know not to rape, and those that do rape, there's something wrong with them, and they don't care that it's wrong. Oh, fem feminism's not going to stop this. It's not going to stop the cat calls. You're wasting your energy on stuff that's not going to accomplish the things you think it is. But yeah, let's let's see what you got to say about it. Here's this one. This is actually from a couple of years ago. Her rape went viral. 16-year-old Jada was drugged, undressed, and raped at a friend's home. When the pictures they had taken of her unconscious body surfaced on social media, people laughed and replicated the photos, tagging them Jada Posse. Jada has bravely chosen to speak out. Rape isn't funny, so why is it that rape victims continue to be publicly mocked all over the country? See also Steubenville, uh, Daisy Coleman, Rachel Bradshaw, Bean, Weberly, Uni Rape, Norwood, Hazen. And, and this is all before the Brock Turner case. You know? I mean, <sighs> this is something... Rape culture is actually a thing. No, it's not. It may surprise you to know that, yeah, I think that's a terrible thing that happened to her. I remember this case. And if I remember right, it was a bunch of teenage boys, a bunch of thug wannabes, as I recall. And if anybody's still making fun of this girl at this point, I'll guarantee that's exactly what you got. Another member of thug culture. What you got is a problem with that thug culture. Not with men in general. 
but that thug culture. It was a terrible thing that happened to this little girl, and nobody should be making fun of her. That is for absolutely sure. But this is not evidence of a rape culture. It's evidence of a thug culture. These boys don't care that it's wrong. They think it makes them look big. It's in their the things that they espouse they don't care half of them probably don't even care if they go to jail over it. it gives them street cred they're criminals robert criminals not just men not all men are criminals gosh will you guys get off this stuff already i know people like to protest it when you start talking about rape culture and a lot of people like to deny it but you know honestly you watch the news and you see it you know, these poor girls are raped. And the first thing people ask me, what were they wearing? Well, they were drinking. They were asking for it. How were they behaving? And when it comes time to the perpetrators, like in the Brock Turner case, they're always talking about, well, the, the guy had such a bright future. He was such a good swimmer. You know, and, and they're lamenting that the rapist screwed up their lives. We're trying to somehow shift the blame onto the victim going, you know, but she was drinking, it was what she was wearing, she was kind of a whore, really. It is. Robert, nobody, nobody's saying those things on the news that you're talking about, you're projecting. Nobody's saying those things. The closest it might come is by simply telling the girl that there's things that they can do to help prevent being sexually assaulted. And it's just common sense. But nobody's putting the blame on the woman. They're still putting it squarely on the man. And in the other case, that jerk, yes, he was a jerk. And nobody cares if his reputation was ruined. If anybody does, it's maybe some, uh, some people in his hometown. And that happens in small towns and hometowns. The big football hero or whatever he is, people will stand up for him. I'll give you that. But it's not evidence of a rape culture. The guy was a chump. He raped her and he went to jail. Now, the length that he spent there, that's a judiciary problem. Still not evidence of a rape culture, though, Robert. You're not proving your point. You're rambling. You know, that's the thing. And when one of these guys are convicted, I mean, the Bart Turner had a six-month conviction. Some of the other rape cases, I mean, one year, two years. There are people in prison who are doing more time for pot than for raping these girls. You know, and it's just, this is where the idea of rape culture comes from. And I can see it. I'm watching the news. I can see it when I see how people act and behave. Well, I'm sorry, Robert. I'm going to need citations on that people doing more time for pot than rape. Um, I don't know. You're going to have to show me what your statistics on that are. I'm not just going to take your word for it. Uh, I don't even want my listeners to just take my word for things. That's why I try to give citations where needed. But it, does it need some overhauling? Yeah, I might surprise you to know that I believe our... our Outlook and our laws of marijuana needs a big overhaul. I think it'd be a good idea to legalize it. I haven't smoked it in 35 years, but I still think that it would probably be a good idea to legalize it. Look at all that tax money we're losing out on. As far as the second part of that, if you really are seeing that when you look at the news, if you're seeing that, you need to get out your tinfoil hat. You know, I got a dad that. Uh, an elderly dad that suffers from dementia and he sees things that aren't there too they make medication for that robert you know i actually really like the concept when people throw it out instead of teaching girls how not to get raped why don't we teach boys not to rape and i think that's a brilliant idea let's have the concept of consent let's teach consent to people it's a really simple solution you know, if people actually follow those rules of consent, rape cases will pretty much evaporate. I mean, yeah, you're always going to have the certain sociopath 
who just doesn't care about the feelings of other people and is just out to entertain themselves. You're always going to have that segment of society. And you just answered your own question and you're too blind to even see it. Teaching boys not to rape isn't going to work. Teaching consent's not going to work. Why? Because most normal people, most normal boys already know that this is wrong. And then you come back with saying and admitting that there always be those weirdos out there do it anyway. Those are the ones that are committing the rape. Not these college boys that are having drunken sex. You know, no, we don't have to stop and consent every 10 seconds to, for lovemaking to remain lovemaking and not being rape. It's just ridiculous. It's a ridiculous idea. The outlook of you feminists is that everybody, and I guess especially men, are just so stupid, so dumb. Yeah. They're so dumb they don't know that rape is wrong. They're so dumb they don't know that they have to have the consent of the girl or it's rape. Yeah, we're just all stupid, Robert, and you're the smart one, aren't you? Oh, Lord, I'm getting a headache. But you're also going to have people going, you know what? I didn't get consent. You know what? Even though she was drinking doesn't mean she's asking for it. You know, if she's dressed provocatively. I mean, really, that goes back to the earlier bit, where you have to be just attracted enough to be attractive, but not so attractive to be, you know, too sexually desirable in the threading that needle. And then, well, if she got drunk and I raped her, I guess she was just too attractive. You know, that poor little object. How dare she entice me? I mean, in the end, it, it oppresses women and infantilizes men. Much in the same way that Islam does it, with burqas and, and hijabs and nijabs. You know, it oppresses women and it infantilizes men. I know some people go, well, they choose to wear the burqa or the hijab or the nijab. Well, if not wearing the burqa or hijab or nijab results in you being, you know, physically assaulted or ostracized from society, you're not really choosing to wear it. And it still infantilizes men. It's going, hey, these guys are no better than beasts or animals who can't control themselves because they don't know any better. So we got to cover up the women to prevent them from doing what animals and heat do. And of course, that just, men are better than that. You know? We truly are. We can learn to control our impulses if we're just taught. You know, ideas of consent. So Islam's really bad on that. But American culture is not a whole lot better, at least in the puritanical Christian parts, for sure. You know, what a woman wears has absolutely no bearing on whether or not she deserves to be raped, whether or not she's been drinking, or anything else. So in the end, these are a lot of reasons why I personally support feminism, because feminism addresses these issues. And yes, there are people who take it too far, who people who take it to a really absurd conclusions, but the road to wisdom is paved with success. And I know there's people going to be calling me a, a mangina, beta male cuck trying to get laid or whatever. Uh, no. No, you see, I come by a lot of these things over the years because once upon a time, I, and I didn't know any better, I was largely uneducated because they didn't teach us in my generation at any rate, not very well. I behaved poorly when I was younger, late teens, early 20s. I, I behaved poorly. But in growing, I saw my poor behavior, and I saw how it caused pain in other human beings. And I saw how behavior of other people who behave like me caused pain in other human beings and realized that this isn't good. And I tried to learn past that, tried to grow past that. I tried to be a better man today than I was yesterday, and I hope to be a better man tomorrow than I am today. And some of these things that help me grow into a better man are encompassed by the ideas of feminism. Whether other people like it or dislike it is simply not my concern. And so, yeah, upon contemplation, I support feminism. I, I truly do. This video explains why. And the funny thing is, is, I know at some point in time, somebody's going to watch this video and they're going to try to cherry pick statistics and data and ideas and put it down in, in the comment section trying to disprove my ideas. 
showing that either they don't understand the point of this video or they're so mired in the ideology they can't see past it. And the fact of the matter is, I don't care. This is why I support feminism. What you support is up to you. Anybody who stuck around to this time, thank you for your time. So yeah, I let that last bit run a little longer than I normally do. One, because I already answered all those questions over and over. And secondly, because this video is already starting to get a little too long. But I hope you can stick to it. But I did have a couple of comments. Robert, if you behaved as poorly as you described, then I'm worried about you, dude. I'm, I'm probably older than you. I'm guessing I am. And I knew better than to do those things. So if you mistreated women in that way, um, yeah, I feel sorry for you. you. You have an issue, an issue that feminism's not going to fee fix. And you're right. Uh, people like me are going to get a hold of this video and tell you you're an idiot. When you put your voice out there on YouTube, with your opinions, you've got to expect people to disagree with you. So you're going to have to toughen up. I mean, heck, I'm sure there's people disagree with me, and I'm sure I'm going to hear it at some point. You know, uh, when I get a larger uh, subscriber base, perhaps, or when some of them get wind of my channel. Yeah, I'm sure I will, and, and that's okay. Hey, I got, <laughs> I got thicker skin than that. Anyway, this is as much as Robert as I can handle in one dose. I've got a raging headache now because of this.